Hello, gorgeous people, and welcome to another TV Central one on one podcast. I'm Aaron Ryan. This is episode 13, 2023, and the ninth of the Australian Survivor Elimination episodes, although this is the 12th elimination overall. It really does not matter whether George has a majority or not. Somehow, in the minority, and everything stacked against the OG villains, he decided to set his target on David, and he didn't miss. David Zarakis uh, is the 12th person eliminated from Australian Survivor. David, thank you for joining me at TV Central. No worries at all. Thank you for having me. Is this starting to get a little bit embarrassing, though? King George is just picking off people one after another after 28 days on the island and seeing what is happening. Why is George not targeted? He's uh, he's unbelievable. I, I, I honestly, I don't get it when... When the OG heroes were winning all the challenges early in the game and the villains were going to tribal, we we could not believe the next day when whenever we saw them them coming up to the mat that George was still there. We we I don't know how people um, didn't vote him out, didn't go after him, and, and that he wasn't taken out early. He just he survives. Um, obviously, he got saved by Shawnee early in the season, and and that was a big move for her um, to keep him around. But <clears throat> I I just can't believe every time they seem to go for him. They miss, and um, I seems I think people almost should go like watching it back. You're like, we've got to go after the numbers around him first, and then maybe go after him because he just keeps everyone together. And it, like you said, it doesn't matter where he's on the top or the bottom. He he just seems to work through it. Are the episodes fun to watch now? I mean, because you were on the other side, so <laughs> you didn't get to see a lot of what was happening um, in the other camp. Is it is it interesting watching watching the episodes now? It was def- definitely for the first like two weeks. Uh, it was fun watching because we're on the um, we're on the heroes and and we know that the chaos was happening on the villains and we only get the fed the information what we get fed on the mat the next day when they give us a little summary at tribal council and that's all we get told. So watching it back, I was really inter- interested to see the the Mimi vote, um, the Michael vote early, and and even like the Fraser um, blind side happened. So watching them back was was really fun uh, to watch because. Yeah, we don't get to see that. So seeing that play out on the other side and, and how everyone plays the game is is fun and interesting to watch. And um, but also then watching it back, like watching last night, you you kind of just squirming your seat, going, Oh, I wish I did that, or I wish I did that. So um it's kind of you get you get both of it. Well, was there any hint that you might be targeted, or was this one of those complete surprise blind sides? Well, as you saw last night, like the vote was meant to be Sam and then George, for some reason, I mean, as good as the player is, but I don't know why he went to Sean and told him that the vote was on Sam. Um, Cause of course the girls are going to change it uh, straight away. If, if Sean knows where the vote's going, um, because then they're obviously worried if one of us has an idol, which obviously Sean does. Um, so then they were worried about that. So I was, I was safe last night and it was Sam until George decides to tell um, Sean. And then they, completely change at last minute. Um, and that's how quickly things can change. So going into tribal, we all thought, well, the information from Sean was that it was Sam was going to cop a couple of votes um, going in. So I completely didn't uh, suspect it at all, just purely for the fact that going in, I thought it was on Sam, um, which would have sucked anyway, Sam going home. He was my best mate out there. Um, but I kind of selfishly, it's like, well, at least it's not you and you survive one more day. So I didn't think at all it was going to be me. And that's why I was so surprised. Well, have a have a little guess. Do you, do you have any reason uh, for the for the switch? Because it was George was Sam, 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 and then that was a last minute change. Do you, like any yeah, ideas so I, of? Well, I think I think because George went to Sean and told him. So obviously George wanted Sean to come over uh, and work with him and, and just get an extra number. Um, and then obviously testing Sean. Sean then goes and tells Sam exactly where the vote's going and. And Shawnee and Liz get spooked going, well, George, you've just told Sean the plan. If they have an idol, they'll just play it for Sam tonight. Um, and, uh, yeah. and and basically they they could one of one of them could have been going home if they put all their votes on Sam. So George telling Sean really cooked it for me that the girls changed it straight away. And they were like, well, we can't vote Sam now because they know. So I think I was just caught in the crosshairs um, basically of there was no real build up to my vote. It was just last minute thing of oh crap like sam now knows it's on him he might have an idol so let's just vote out david and i think that's kind of what played out in the end that i was just kind of caught in the crosshairs there was a hint that these spice girls might have been on rocky ground after the whole flick saga 
Yep. Um, it seems pretty strong now and George back to being in full control of his group. Do you, do you see it that way or do you think there might be some issues there? I mean, is this breakable or unbreakable, this this group? Well, watching back, so when Sam, Nina and I teamed up with Liz to try and blindside Haley, we we wanted to use that as if that had worked, we were going to then go to Liz and be like, let's team up on the other side at Merge. Um, and let's use Shawnee, let's use your your people around you and, and let's kind of create just a new line. So let's flip the game wide open. That's That was our plan. And um, had I known, what obviously watching back, you don't see this because it happens on the, other, on the other beach. That Stevie vote where Flick was working with Shawnee and Liz and there was fractions where Liz challenged George and threatened to use her idol to save Flick. Mm. If Flick had to come to us and said, hey, look, I've got Shawnee and Liz on my side and to me going well, you've got Nina and Sam, that's a strong six. And I'll, us three have already got a pre-existing relationship with Liz. So that's a really strong group right there. So you kind of look back and go, geez, that could have been a really great opportunity to then maybe get George in the minority because get Liz and Shawnee on our side. Shawnee's now made made merch. He doesn't need George as a, as a shield anymore. So that was kind of the rough plan. If you kind of sit on the beach and, I mean, everything changes in a second out there. But if you kind of map out a bit of a plan. That was kind of our, our, my plan a little bit that I wanted to use Liz to blindside Haley, go over, work with Shawnee, um, and Flick obviously was there as well. So we could have worked together, um, but things mm. don't often pan out the way you want them to. When you're you're part of alliances, I know you obviously you go with a group in unison. I'm, I'm wondering though, if, if every decision made was the exact one that you wanted, how would things have played out differently? Well, the thing is, so um, early on when I wanted to blindside Haley early in the season um, and Sean shut it down, that's always, that always sticks in your mind. And then when Nina, Sam and I teamed up with Liz, we didn't need Sean anymore. So those kind of things stick in your head where you go, well, we wanted to get Haley out. You didn't want to do it. So we're going to do this without you. And, and my alliance might change to someone else. Um, I still wanted to work with Sean post that, but we wanted to kind of reiterate to Sean, well, Kind of, you've been running the the alliance for a while, and fair enough because you've been doing it well. But you're not always going to be able to run it, and we're making moves without you, and you got to kind of jump on board. So that was um that was our thing there, where we're going to break off and and become a a new alliance because, I mean, if you have an alliance to the final six or seven, well, you got to battle out anyway. So it's mm. like you can break up at any stage um, because if you yeah you got to turn on people at some stage. So swapping and kind of changing alliances, but maybe having strong people, just a couple of people around you um, is kind of a good way to play. And I thought that was really good with me. I was strong with Nina and Sam and and we had that kind of great relationship where we could kind of pick which way we go. Um, but in the end, again, that mutiny kind of just, it kind of cooked it for, for us because that was our big move. Didn't work. Liz goes back to George. George wants to work with Haley. And we're kind of stuck in limbo. Where do we go? So that kind of what happened to us. Yeah. All right. In a different direction now. What do you think of this whole meat tray thing? Complimentary, sexist? What is it? Uh, to be honest, I think it was uh, it was a it was a narrative created by Ben to which I love I love Ben, but it was to potentially use it against us later in the game. I think Ben does so well. Like he created a story about Shani, um, and it got her out. I think Ben was maybe leaning towards using it against us later in the game. It wasn't for anything else other than going, hey, look, the four boys are working together. Maybe I should team up with people to vote them out. But I think Jerry took it as like these big alphas and and these meat tray and, oh, look, they're working together and I hate, I hate the meat tray and I hate this and I want to get them out. And I was like, here I was working with Flick and Nina and me and Nina every single day were working together um, talking strategy and and I wasn't really part of this like meat tray um, alliance. Like I was ready to branch off with Liz, Sam and Nina. Like I was ready to jump ship and go. So for me, it wasn't this thing, but um, it kind of just, I reckon it got created as a narrative from kind of Ben in a smart way to kind of use it against us and get us out at a certain point. Um, but I wasn't really buying into the whole thing out there. Like, yeah, I was strong with, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was close with Sean but that's because we previously have a professional football working relationship together. But out there as an alliance, I was more leaning towards Nina, Sam and Liz at a certain point. So for me, it wasn't really like, yeah, let's get the boys together and, and do this stuff. But that's kind of what a couple people ran with and and kind of 
like I said, Jerry, Jerry just stuck with it and told everyone and created a narrative behind it. And it wasn't really the case. Actually, that is quite interesting because I always thought that the meat tray thing was more about a couple of you hot guys and speedos, but was it, was it actually more of, it seems to be more about the fact that, you know, this is the alpha group and we have to be careful of these, these people and, 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 and the boys type thing. So the meat tray wasn't the speedos thing, obviously. Well, no, well, sorry. Well, for Ben, for Ben early on, it could have been, I mean, he just, he described it very well when um, he described that. Um, I'm just thinking like Jerry took that and kind of ran with it yeah, and then yeah. created his own narrative behind it and was like the alphas, the boys, the meat tray, this, that. And he kind of was like a dog with a bone that was like, I'm sticking to that narrative and telling George and telling other people. And, and it kind of, yeah, worked in his favor, but against us. And I didn't like that narrative, but Ben was more having fun with it, I think, and being like, yeah, it's guys in speedos and have a look at these guys and and they're our muscle and they're winning challenges for us and all that kind of thing. So um, he was having a lot of fun with it and, and I love Ben and we've had some great chats about that um, post the show and um, it's, it's yeah, he's a, he's a fun man to be around. I want to ask about one person that was eliminated very early on um, and we had mostly villains um, at Tribal Council, so it was hard to get a response from any of the heroes. It, it's about Rogue. She was mm -hmm. universally targeted to to leave, um, and we did see some of her comments on air. This seemed to be the only Tribal Council that was not a blindside and welcomed by both tribes. Mm. What, was it was it just her language that put her offside, or, or, or was there other stuff we didn't see? Oh, she like socially, she just didn't connect with people. It was. It was kind of, it was, she made conversations very awkward. Um, she would come in and someone would be talking and completely irrelevant topic. Like she would just try and one up that person or kind of like push in and, and say she did something better than someone else. Right. Like it's kind of hard to explain, but she would just really come in and, and take over the conversation and, and no one really liked that about, um, about her. It was like always trying to one up someone. Um, whereas she might not even be part of that combo. So that was her person, like, the personalities of the 11 people um, who were there for the first 14 days on the hero tribes, they all kind of matched and were, and were great. And we were, we're all getting along and, and we were kind of that strong kind of, Oh, this is fun. Like have all this, like, cause we didn't have to really vote anyone out for a fair while. Whereas rogue was that real outlier in the group and kind of just didn't really click personally with anyone. Um, and that kind of then ruined the game for her. Cause she then, I think just started probably realizing she was on the outer and then, yeah, started throwing in some comments that weren't really appropriate and and it kind of just made people go, well, you're an easy vote. Like, we're just going to vote you out. You clearly, we're a strong 11. You're not really a part of this. So, um, yeah, like you're kind of gone next tribal. So that was kind of what happened there. Um, it was more just a, I think, just personality clash. Like her personalities just didn't really get along. She didn't find kind of her one or two like personalities that she could really kick, click and connect with um, out there, whereas everyone else was doing that. All right, second last question. Um... Ex-AFL player, strapping guy. I'm guessing that you're probably used to eating quite a bit. Um, how was the experience for you over the 28 days? Did you lose weight or muscle or stay the same or were you starving all the time? How'd you yeah. go? Yeah, I think if you look at me um, in uh, the challenge the other day, my speedos, my face, my neck was all gone. Um, I was just like lean and cut as anything. Um, going into the game, if I ever played again, I would 100% eat a lot more food going in. I would... I'll try and go in five, six, seven kilos heavy. Um, I yeah. think Sean did that this year because he obviously played before and he knew um, you, you just naturally, you're only eating rice and beans every day. So you naturally lose weight. So I would um, I would definitely go in there again and, and heavier um, because I'm someone who's naturally very skinny. So if I don't work out, obviously, like you said, playing footy, being in the gym almost every day, uh, if I don't work out, I don't look the way I do. I, I just get really skinny. So um, being there for 28, 29 days, all of a sudden my frame's going back to its natural state, which is uh, quite a skinny chicken leg kind of frame. Um, so that that kind of is the big challenge that I'm a big eater um, and obviously I work out a lot. So um, not being able to do that and, and losing um, so much like kind of shape and figure was was a big challenge. Well, don't worry. That's happening to Simon too. I mean, he's he's mm. he's still lean and stuff, but that sort of bigger chest that he had coming in is starting to get a, a lot leaner as as you yes. can see over there. Last question, 13 seasons of AFL. Did, did that help with the challenges? I mean, I asked that because it would seem obvious that, you know, that that would be the answer. But in some challenges, there are puzzles. There's even yeah. more stuff with core, both mental and physical, like the yeah. one where you 
sort of sit back and have your feet up in the air, you know, with a partner and, you know, have the box that you have to hold up. I mean, the last two teams for that were both were women. In fact, the fittest men seem to drop out towards the start. Yep. What's it with those type of challenges where like the fit guys like you um, tend to go well, out and the women are actually going well? Yeah. Yeah. I, you're hundred percent spot on. Like the, the kind of stigma around the game is, oh, the big guys are the threats. They're physically good in challenges. But later in the game, come merge. If, you, if you're if you more power to weight, so if you're a smaller frame athlete or you're a female, like you said, they go really well in the endurance challenges, in any core challenges, any balance challenges. So the fe- like females or, or people that are smaller are actually the bigger threats like later in the game. And this is like... This is kind of you get frustrated. Like I didn't want to take Haley to merge because Haley's such a challenge beast, and Flick's a challenge beast. They're so strong. Shawnee in the any core or endurance challenges is an absolute beast, and it's like these girls are going to win challenges and beat you later in the game. And that's the best part about Survivor. It's not oh you're big and strong. You're gonna you're gonna dominate challenges. It's Survivor challenges in terms of human anatomy, it challenges strength, endurance, cardio, balance, agility, mental with puzzles. Nina's an absolute beast on the puzzles. Memory, we do memory challenges, word puzzles. So it's it covers every element. And footy is great for, for, for preparing me for strength and for cardio and for endurance. Yeah, that's great. But that's only a small portion or, or half the challenges. The other challenges are a lot different to that. Um, where a lot more people come into play and they're a lot better at challenges than what I am uh, in that regard. So that's what I love about Survivor, but it's also the narrative around like guys just being challenge beasts and all that. It's just, it's so wrong because later in the game, I'm telling you, they like like um, Flick and Haley in their season lasted five hours um, mm. on that challenge. And it's like, that that's what they're so good at. So they're more of a threat later in the game. Watch out for the girls soon. Yep. Yes. David, you were a gentleman, a great player. Um, people would say an amazing meat tray as well. Um, blindsided, but it's it almost seems like that's the only way to get out of Survivor at the moment. Um, great game, David. Thank you for joining me today. No worries. Thanks for having me. David, 12th eliminated from Australian Survivor. Australian Survivor, 7.30 Sunday, Monday and Tuesday on 10 and 10 play. TV Central will be talking to almost every eliminated uh, contestant. There will be a podcast available around lunchtime the day after elimination. That's it for this episode. For all the latest news, podcasts, and streaming info, guides, and ratings, head to tvcentral.com.au. Until next time, I'm Aaron Ryan. Thanks to David Sarakis. Bye for now. (laughs) 